You guys are one of the first guests we've had at SeaWorld's Florida Coral Rescue Center. Look at all these tanks. This is what I wanted my basement to look like. <laughs> <laughs> this is absolutely holy. Justin, what's going on, man? Hey, great to see you. Andrew, awesome. Great to see, great to you, see you, Rasheed. Up, great to see you, too. Come on in. Look at this place. Welcome to the FCRC. Thanks, this is Justin, the Florida Coral Rescue Center. In this center, we're holding almost 700 of the most critically threatened corals in the entire Caribbean. We are currently the largest coral rescue facility for Caribbean corals in the entire world. We have 18 different aquariums here, and we also have 18 different species in these tanks. The first thing you probably notice is the lights, man. We've got, we've got wow. over 100 Radeon Gen 4 lights, and they're very blue, and that's to, to simulate their natural environment, of course. So these corals right. were collected at around 40 to 50 feet of depth. Okay. So it's a natural blue light. That, that depth, we get a lot of filtering of the reds and yellows. So this lighting is actually perfect for the corals that we're holding here in the facility. These things are massive. Yes, they've grown wonderfully for us. In the last two and a half years, um, a lot of these corals came in smaller. They're growing for us, they're getting healthy. Right now we're holding these corals as a gene bank. So these corals are right. safe from a disease in the Caribbean called stony coral tissue loss disease. Yeah, it's ravaged it, yeah. through the Caribbean. We're hoping to put their offspring, their, their baby corals, back into the ocean once these spawn for us. We're hoping they propagate, they grow, and we're hoping to get genetically diverse babies that can go back under the reef. That's our goal. Let me show you the rest of the facility. There's Absolutely. a lot more to check out. This is just right. a one tank. Come on, guys. Wow. So guys, this is what we think the future of coral rescue looks like. So this is one of our holding aquariums here at, this, at the Coral Rescue Center. There's a few different types of species in here. We have the Orbicellas on your, on your right. We also have these amazing corals called uh, Mesidophilia ferox. It's one of the most threatened corals in the Caribbean. Um, it's, in, it's rated as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. So it's very important, very rare, very unique coral. It's also very beautiful for a Caribbean coral. It's green with some, some orange spots. Amazing. And as I mentioned, I think this is the future of coral rescue because what we have here in the center, these are, these are frag tiles. What those are are little tiles on the, on the corals. These mycetophilia have actually spawned for us. We think we're the first facility in the entire world to spawn these and have the larvae from these mycetophilia ferox. Um, you can see little pink circles on some of those tiles. Nice. Yeah. Those are baby corals. So those actually wow. came out of the, the mycetophilia. We, they settle, so people think corals can't swim. They can swim for about 48 hours after they, after they develop. So these corals swam down, settled on these tiles. We put them in here to keep, them, keep the urchins off, because urchins can accidentally predate upon these right now. They'll go over and scrape it. So the corals in here are going to grow to an adult size, and that's what we're going to put back in the reef. So you keep a cleanup crew inside, yeah. inside, yep. but not the urchins. The so urchins have the ability to, to scratch the coral to off. Take the right. coral, to take the coral, eat, off. eat it off the tile, exactly, yeah. So inside here, so we only- So I keep telling you about the 300, man, and those all the frag plugs keep falling off. Yeah. Yeah, the urchins are the bulldozers. Yeah. Yeah. They, they do a great bull, job, but too, too good of a job, job sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Tell us you about were, the percentage. We yeah. lost 98% uh, of the reef. Yeah. There's 2% yeah. left. What are we trying to add? Well, another, another few percent? The stony of? coral tissue loss disease, when it came through the reefs, we lost up to 90% of the stony corals on a lot of reefs down there. So what Fish and Wildlife and NOAA wants to do is they want to put back a percentage of those corals. They want to put them back because what happens is right now, the corals are so spread out down in the Keys, they can't reproduce with each other. Right now, like the, the Dendrogyrus, they're basically functionally extinct. There's not enough in a square mile that can, that can fertilize the eggs. So the, the, the thought is to put these back in certain areas where they can act as like uh, spawning beds. These corals will be close enough where they can reproduce with the same species, just like they do right they did in the past, and, um, and repopulate. So they, they want to get enough corals on the reef so the reefs can take care of themselves. My first impression walking in here yeah. is we forgot how beautiful 
that these corals are, the right? The Caribbean corals. Are, were. Uh, were <laughs> yeah. or are. Yeah. You look at these things and 95% of the, of the look, look at these lobos. So these, these are spectacular. Right? They look like big lobos, right? They're all the same species. Yeah, they're all called Musa angulosa. It's one of my favorite corals here in the facility. They're, they're amazing. They have color. Um, they, they do respond a little bit to the radion lights we have here. They've colored up from the ocean, but they are incredible corals and LPS. Um, and they get fed, they eat a lot. We feed them some PE mysis, some pea krill. Um, they're wonderful corals to take care of. Unfortunately, you won't see these in the hobby though because they are so protected. We can't, we can't let these go out to, to hobbyists. Okay guys, so I, I think we've seen enough of this aquarium. Okay. Let's head to some, another aquarium with some bigger corals in it. Let's go. Let's go. Rashid, Andrew, these are some of the biggest corals in the project right here. Wow. These are Colpophilia natans. Um, these corals came to us at a size that was probably about seven or eight inches in diameter. They wanted wow. a coral that was large enough that they could collect and be mature, sexually mature, but not so big that they couldn't, they couldn't handle. So um, these corals have probably at least doubled in size since we got them two and a half years ago. Uh, they, they are growing well in here. They're very established, very uh, consistent growth. Um, these are some of the future corals that we're going to hopefully spawn, put back on, on the reef. SeaWorld's um, main role in this whole project, the Florida Reef Trask Rescue Project, is to be the husbandry specialist. So SeaWorld knows coral husbandry, coral biologists, biology. So that's what we were brought into the project for. Disney provides a lot of the conservation funds for us. Fish and Wildlife is the ones that provide the, um, the permitting and paperwork. But um, really SeaWorld's role in this is to provide, we provide 100% of the staffing. We don't own this facility, but we provide 100% of the staffing, the expertise, and the hours that go into growing these corals and putting them back in the wild. Justin, this is amazing what you guys have accomplished here, but uh, I'm sure you don't do all this by yourself, right? Of course not, no. Let me take you right now. We can, we can meet some of the staff, introduce you to one of our coral vets. Okay, let's do it. Perfect. Yes, let's go. Andrew, Rashid, I'd like to introduce hey. you to Dr. Claire. Nice Dr. to meet you. Dr. Claire is our resident coral veterinarian. So she mm -hmm. comes out here every uh, couple weeks. Mm -hmm. um, she looks at the corals that need treatment. So if we have a coral that becomes sick or, or, or injured, um, she'll be able to, to, to prescribe medication for that. We work extremely close with the aquarists, the coral biologists. And whenever there's a coral of concern, um, they report it to me. I come out and take a look at it. And we always um, talk about the, the history of that coral first right. to try to figure out, is it something with the lighting? Is it something with the, the water flow? Is it right. something with the temperature? So the environment is always the first thing, right. even as a veterinarian, that I think about. And that goes for all of our aquatic species, not just coral, but right. fish and other species. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, if it comes down to it and we can't find an environmental cause that we could make adjustments to to help treat a coral, then uh, we do additional diagnostics to determine whether or not is it a bacterial infection, is it something else. Um, I was just taking a culture swab from the coral a few moments ago. Um, we will um, see if any bacteria grows from that or any fungal organisms grow from that. Culture it here in the lab? Yes, yeah, so we culture it back at um, our park at SeaWorld at our microbiology lab that we have on site. It'll tell me what bacteria was grown and then what antibiotics it could be sensitive to. Right. And I co um, compare it to both abnormal tissue and normal tissue because there's a lot of normal bacteria that grows on coral right. too. Right. And I don't want to affect that if I don't have right. to. And when you do see bacterial infection, what what do you usually see? Vibrio is one of the most Vibrio common. Vibrio is the one, yes. the one you see it's the most. It's one of the most common, yeah. And even though Aramonas is more Aramonas. common in fresh water, we right. do see it um, in the Here. system too, yep. yeah. yeah. Yep. And occasionally staff are stripped, but that's a little less frequent, yeah. Well, it, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much thank for taking yes. much, Doc. Yeah, a little thank bit of you time so and your busy schedule. No, I, I love talking about this. I mean, there's so many people who don't realize that there are veterinarians that work on coral. Andrew, Rashid, I got one more place to show you. It's a really amazing site. It's back at SeaWorld. So we're yeah. going to head out there, take a look at that. Let's go check it out. Ready? Let's go.
Justin, wow. look at this. Like, what, what's going on over here? Tell, it's tell us incredible, what's right, Rashid? This is our SeaWorld Orlando Rescue Center. Yeah. This is where we rescue our manatees. So I bet you didn't know that SeaWorld, in our history, we've rescued over 40,000 animals. 40,000? Animals here at SeaWorld or our other sister parks at SeaWorld. Yeah, so that's an amazing number. Just think about that number. I mean, it just, Look it's at the size of that manatees. I mean, they're bringing enormous. 40, they're enormous. These. Yes, 40, well, it's wow. not only manatees, but birds, okay. turtles, dolphins, all sorts of, you know, now corals. So okay. um, really, we like to say here at SeaWorld, rescuing animals is in our DNA. When you're a coral care person or yes. taking care of animals, it's it's a 24-7. Correct. You don't go on vacations without thinking of your animals. You know, exactly. I, I believe yeah. you. Definitely. Yep, exactly. So you, behind us, there's some manatees. They're eating romaine lettuce. It's one of their favorite snacks. It's what they eat all day. Just like in the wild, these manatees are very hungry, eat a lot of food. Um, these manatees, we bring them in, they rescue them, they, 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 they feed them. Um, and then they put them back. The, the goal of every rescue program here at SeaWorld and anywhere else is to put the animals back into the nature where we found them. Andrew, so, you think one of these manatees would fit in the tank? <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> You'd have a lot of frags. You'd have a, lot, have of a lot of frags. We'd have a lot of frags. Drew, I heard they have a big dome here with corals in it. We should check it out. Let's yeah, go, let's man. Go do it. Let's go do it. I'm guys. excited. Yep, let's go. Wow. Andrew, look at this. We need one of these domes. It's amazing, right? This is absolutely amazing. Look. Wow. Look at this. So guys, welcome to SeaWorld's new Coral Rescue. We're doing the exact same work we did at the FCRC, the Florida Coral Rescue Center, right. only we brought it here on property at SeaWorld. Right. We wanted to really show the guests the education, the science that we're doing at the other facility, only allow them to see it firsthand. We brought this amazing technology here in, in the park for our guests to see and realize that SeaWorld is also not only rescuing manatees and rescuing turtles, but they're also rescuing these, these corals that are also critically endangered. Coral reefs are super important to our economy. Down in the Keys, they raise a lot of money for um, you know, f the fisheries industry, scuba right. industries, recreation industries. They also um, slow down uh, tropical storms that come in. Yeah. Um, and 25% uh, uh, of all fish in the ocean are either born or live some of their lives on a, on a well, coral I'll reef. tell you this, Justin, I'm impressed that SeaWorld picked such a magnificent like it's really area to an amazing yeah it's an amazing facility. Because you could have just put it in a room and people walk in and out of it. We've seen that, but yeah. this is pretty cool. This is the future of Coral Rescue here at SeaWorld. Well, why don't we go to one of these vests and check out what's yeah, in there? Yeah, let's see what's inside. Yeah, come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go, Andrew. Wow, look at this. Wow, this looks like uh, a pretty fresh vat here. You guys are one of the first guests we've had at SeaWorld's Florida Coral Rescue Center. How'd you uh, get these cycle? They got these cycled pretty quickly. How'd you do it? Yeah. So what we did was we took aquacultured live rock from the old Florida Coral Rescue Center. We brought wow. it here to SeaWorld's Coral Rescue Center to kind of jumpstart the process. So right. it's all uh, biosecure approved rock that's been collected down the Keys through aquaculture. We brought it back here. We started the systems up. Um, these systems have only been running for about two to three weeks. So these systems are very are very fresh. Uh, we've got our first batch of corals in here from another AZA facility. They're doing amazing right, right. now. They're doing very well for just coming in, coming into our care. So we're going to use the same protocols, same parameters, same husbandry techniques to grow these corals just as we did the other ones to being healthy parent colonies for future propagation. What are you going to do with the public? So to explain to me, are they going to come this close to uh, endangered species? Are they going to exactly. stay away? It's, it's an open door exhibit. So basically guests can come in during park hours. It's probably going to be during from like 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock because the lights do have to turn off. So we, right. we don't make our corals stay up late for our guests. Basically the corals, the, the corals set the clock. So they, they, the, the guests will come in during the daylight hours. They'll see the coral. We'll have an educator in here or one of the professional aquarists. This is going to actually be them talking to the biologists who are working in the area wow. who are experts on coral restoration, coral biology, coral reproduction. So we, we hope to, to let our guests know just how important these corals are to, right. to the environment, to, to the Florida's ecosystem, to the economy. Listen, and Justin, we know you have a lot of work to do, so I think we've taken a lot of your time, so we, we really appreciate everything you've done It was a pleasure all day. Andrew, it's amazing. Yeah, you guys are always welcome. Stop Thank back. You so Thank you so much. I want to show you. I might bring the family to get, get one of these tours. The I would love to show you as we grow. We're going to get bigger. You're always invited back. Appreciate Great it. job, man.
Love it. Thank you so much. Yep. Andrew.